So now what we're going to do is we're entering into the new series that we started teaching here called Soul Map. It's like the new segment of the Land of Israel Fellowship. We've been working on it for a while now. And on this segment, we're learning the Torah on the level of Sod, the hidden level, the mystical level, where the stories of the Torah, they're not just history, they're not just wisdom, they're not just psychological representations, but they are nothing less than the expressions of our very soul. The stories of the Bible are actually a map to help us reveal our soul in the world. We've learned about Abraham and Isaac. And last week, we started to learn about Jacob. And Jacob, just like Ari mentioned before, is the attribute, the virtue of truth. His life was the manifested sphera, the manifested dimension, the light, the virtue of honesty, of truth. Like Micah the prophet said, Titen emet liyakov. Jacob was given truth. And, you know, everyone knows this. You see a man of truth. You see a man of integrity. You know it. You respect it. And according to the prophetic tradition, when you are truthful, you are revealing your soul in the world. And by doing that, you're manifesting God in your life and you're manifesting God's light to everyone around you. And when you're living your soul, you're on the path. You are aligned. You're walking in the light. Um, only good will come out of manifesting the godly virtues and the sphero, the lights that emanate from God through us into the world. Um, it won't be easy. That's not a part of the deal. That's not a part of the promise. Jacob's life wasn't easy. Abraham's life wasn't easy. Nothing is easy. In fact, in order for the light of the soul to break through, it has to break through. In order to manifest, for example, courage, there has to be a challenge there. There has to be fear there. It has to be a challenge or courage can't really be manifested. Loving kindness and giving, well, um, when times are tough, that's the whole point. It's easy to be loving and kind when everything is hunky-dory. It's easy to be nice to your wife when she's just a, you know, a doll. But when she's uh, giving you a hard time, that's a little bit more difficult to be loving then. But that's the whole idea. It's to manifest the godly virtues in the challenges of life. And last week, we spoke about Jacob and we spoke about truth. And we said that we, Jacob... Although you look on the outside of his life, he tricked Esau by getting the birthright, by giving him the, the soup. He tricked his father by dressing up as uh, Esau and stole the, the bracha. He tricked Laban. I mean, if there's anything that Jacob wasn't on the outside, it looks like a man of truth. Like all he did was kind of trickery over and over again. All of the stories of Jacob are not uh, truth and integrity, but they were sort of trickery and manipulations. And so what's up with that? And so what we learned there is that Jacob was manifesting an inner truth, that he was not lying to himself. He was honest with himself. He lived with inner integrity. He knew what needed to be done. And even if on the outside, it looked like he was being dishonest, he was being the most honest. He was an ish tam. He was wholehearted, perfect, pure, sincere, flawless, a man of integrity. That's what ish tam means. Jacob never changed. He was being as integral as he could to the inner truth that he knew was right. Even if on the outside, it looked like he was doing something wrong, he knew that what he was doing was God's will. And that's our mission because we're going to have a lot of influences that are telling us you're not doing it right. You're not being good. The media is going to tell you one thing. Tradition might tell you something else. Your parents might say something. Your friends might say something. And everyone said, no, no, no. You have to follow your inner truth and follow the truth that has been revealed to you in your life. And if you follow that path, God's seal is truth. And if you stay true to what's been revealed to you as your truth, everyone on the outside can say, nah, you're stupid, you're a liar, you're manipulating, you're this, you're that. And you have to be truthful, truthful on the inside. And so that's one dimension of truth, not to lie to yourself, living with integrity. Um, and, you know, the, it, it seems as though that was after Abraham and Isaac, it was like the last ingredient that we needed before the nation of Israel to be born. That is the hub of the wheel that all of the spokes rely on. And so what do I mean by that? So we have this ancient map 
this ancient map called the soul map. And so I want to put that up on the screen now, and I'm sort of giving away the rest of the attributes ahead of time, but I actually want you to look at this map. Now, this is an ancient map, and so the traditions vary of when this manifested in the world, when it actually became a map. But this is a map, a symbol, a symbol. It's trying to give over these ideas. Each one of these circles represents one of the patriarchs or heroes of the Bible. And if you see the yellow one in the middle, that yellow one on this map is Jacob. That yellow one is truth. And if you look, it's in the middle of everything. All of the other attributes, all of the other spherot, all of the other virtues revolve around the truth. If you don't have truth in your life, you don't have anything because everything relies on your inner truth. How are you supposed to know if you're really being loving? How are you really disciplined? Are you really keeping your word? Are you really being courageous? Only you can know that. And if you're busy lying to yourself, you can't manifest anything. And if not only that, if you're lying to the outside, then forget about it. Your whole world is going to be lost. And that's why when you look at Jacob's prayer to God, if we can put up that screen, look at what he says. He says, I've become small from all of the kindness in all of the truth that you've shown me. Can we get up that slide for just a second, please? What is Jacob saying here? I've become small by all the kindness and all the truth that you have done your servant. For with my staff, I crossed this Jordan. Now I've become two camps. Now on a literal level, yeah. I mean, he crossed the Jordan with nothing, with just like the clothes on his back and a staff. And all of a sudden he came back and the kindness and the truth. What is Jacob saying there? He's saying that God, you have revealed to me not only kindness, but you've revealed the truth to me. I was following your direction that you gave me in my life. In my goodness, your truth manifested. I saw it. And I'm just, I'm katonti. I'm small. I've become, to, I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of all the kindness that you've revealed to me. I just stayed true and the truth of reality has unfolded, and I just can't believe, I feel unworthy. I feel like I'm just not, I'm not, I'm too small. I'm too small by your kindness, but really I saw that your truth is there. I was true to myself, and your truth was exposed in the world, and look how I've come back to Israel now. I'm so strong. I left with a stick in my hand, and I've come back, and I have now two camps I've become so strong. I've become so blessed with children and wives and sheep and camels. I just can't believe it. Your truth was revealed to me in my life. And so I think that's the right way to see reality. The creator of reality, who is one with reality, that's the Jewish understanding of God, that there's a creator beyond our reality that created our reality, and he is one with reality. It's like a oneness that is beyond. Even science agrees that there was a reality before creation, that something created something from nothing. That's the Jewish understanding, and from that, that everything was created, one with reality. So what is that teaching us? You can try to lie and manipulate and twist reality so much, but eventually the truth is going to be revealed and reality is going to snap back at you. There's no way around it. God is the truth. Reality is the truth. And there's no way you can't really manipulate the fabric of reality. So just be honest. You can't do tshuva without truth. You can't be kind without truth. You can't be in relationship with the ultimate good, with the ultimate of anything, without being committed to the truth. That's why Psalm 119 says, Rosh Devarcha Emet, the head principle of your word is truth. The head principle, it's the center spoke that everything else relies on. That's why Jacob, from that finally, all of the tribes were born. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Dr. Jordan Peterson. And after he's written two books with 24 rules for life, they just asked him, listen, if you had one rule out of all of the rules of life that you've ever written, what's the one rule that's the most important rule for life? And he said, tell the truth, or at least don't lie. That's the most important of all of his rules. And I think he said just, he was just aligning himself with King David's line saying the head principle, Rosh Dvarcha Emet, the chief principle of how to live our lives is to be a man and woman of truth. Be honest. Everything stems from the virtue of honesty. And so that 
is what Jacob, our father, taught us. That's what he manifested. Hi, my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. There are live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds and nationalities. It feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets unfiltered and uncensored directly from the land of Israel. We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Callan Ardell, USA. Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feasts, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel, to help us navigate through these turbulent times. These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each, and truly each session is the best one yet. Tehillah is a tremendous asset and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for century. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship, myself, Rabbi Arya Bramwitz in Tehillah Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24-6 via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.